For COVID-19, because of the urgency, everything was done at the same time as long as it could be done at the same time. So for instance, as the studies went into, you know, would this protect against COVID-19 in our mouse model in Singapore, Arcturus went ahead and did the toxicology studies in the US. We ran everything in parallel and then we came together and said, okay, with this body of data, does it look useful? At the same time, we didn't wait till we had all the data before we went to HSA. We told them we're going to be doing this and HSA worked with us and said, as soon as you got the data, you're ready, you let us have it. We will do this on a rolling submission. So the review was happening as we were generating the data. Right? So that's how we, we, we shortened what would have taken you know, three years or so into about four months. And I think that's how all the other companies like Pfizer, Moderna and AstraZeneca move as well. Yeah. So that, that's how we crunch the timeline. And it's important to note that there were no corners were cut. Right. In terms of the safety, no, no corners were cut. Right. So we did all the necessary safety studies. Uh, usually phase three will go on for about a year because you want to look to see whether you know, it, it protected people. But part of the reason why it was done over a year is because usually there's not that many cases, but there's so many cases in COVID right now in the US that they could, they could get to the number of cases needed to analyze the data within two months. The only thing is, therefore, we don't know how long the immunity would last. So is the vaccine, the, the immunity generated by Pfizer and other vaccines, would it be durable? When do you need to give a boost, right? Uh, that part, we don't know. Doesn't mean that because we don't know the answer to that question, we cannot use the vaccine. Many vaccines are uh, deployed uh, and, and used in population before we know the answer. The reason is because maybe you don't need a booster until 10 years later. So are you going to wait 10 years before you license the vaccine? We're not. So the way that um, uh, public health agencies like MOH and all that would uh, do is that they would institute a surveillance program right, for vaccine preventable diseases. In fact, this MOH still has a surveillance program for vaccines that we know work very well, including measles, mumps and rubella, including whooping cough, all that. MOH is still monitoring, right? And the idea of this monitoring is that once you vaccinated the population or enough uh, percentage of the population, then you expect only a certain number of cases. When that number suddenly creep up, then you, you'll be thinking maybe the vaccine now has, has lost its durability, right? So, or the immunity has lost its durability. We need to give a second dose. So the systems are in place, right? Um, so I, I think although there is an unknown, it shouldn't stop us from getting vaccinated. The short answer to that is as many as possible, right? Um, so maybe the question should be turned around and say who cannot be vaccinated? Um, I think there, okay, obviously those who have an allergy to some components of the vaccine, but those are rare. Right? And by allergy, uh, I, you know, it's not just the rash or things like that, it's the, you know, the kind of anaphylaxis where you get um, swollen eyes, lips, uh, airway, uh, that then makes it difficult for you to breathe or your blood pressure drops, right? causes you to faint. It's not deadly because if it's done in a clinic, we can easily give a shot of adrenaline or EpiPen uh, and that would just reverse the whole process. But that, that's one consideration. Um, there are some people, of course, who uh, um, are immunosuppressed and therefore they might not be able to receive these vaccines. Now, for, for the general vaccines, like RNA, the RNA vaccines, the, um, the these, AstraZeneca's vaccine, it shouldn't be a problem because they, they, they will not replicate, they will not cause an infection. Generally, the immunosuppressed cannot receive a live vaccine. So like the measles vaccine, the yellow fever. The reason is because even though these are weakened viruses, but in the context of a very weak immune system, maybe the body cannot control it, then it becomes you know, uh, uh, bad right? and, and maybe cause disease. So generally it's a live vaccine, but none of what we're developing is alive, right? Um, you could argue that maybe the one that we are working on with Arcturus, the self-replicating, maybe you need to be a bit cautious in the immunosuppressed. And, and that would be right. And, and it's for us to, you know, for us to show and test in, in, uh, in, in various systems to be sure that it's not going to cause a problem. But by and large, I, you know, that unless there's an allergy or something 
um, adverse reaction to it that we have not that it's not that's very rare um, then that there's no reason why anyone should uh, avoid vaccination for pregnant women there is a set of studies that need to be done before you can use it in pregnancy now I can say that that has been done right so essentially that that's a series of animal studies that you show that it's not going to you know affect the, the the fetus the baby uh, that it's not going to cause any you know, uh, miscarriage, disformity, everything, right? Um, that has been done. Uh, however, you know, so it, for, for example, in, in the US, they have given the vaccine to, to pregnant women. In Singapore, our risk is much smaller. It's not what it is in the US. We don't have uh, local cases of COVID-19 right now. So in that sense, I, I, I would suggest that, you know, pregnancy is not going to be forever so you know as you're pregnant then wait a few months then after you've del delivered there should be no problem uh, the if you're going if you are planning the pregnancy that shouldn't affect you in fact if you're planning then all the more you want to take it now and, and avoid having to take it during the pregnancy uh, if you've delivered recently and you're breastfeeding and all that it should not be a problem and why I say that it should not be a problem is because these are not live vaccines the RNA vaccine, once it goes into the body, it, it and whatever cells take up the, the RNA, and we're not injecting directly into the blood, it's into the muscle. So the muscle cell and the immune cells ar around the muscle will take up the RNA, and that's it. It's not going to spread. Therefore, I, I'm quite confident that, you know, if you're breastfeeding, it's safe. If you're planning a pregnancy, it's safe. Uh, and, and, you know, the only thing that... Um, Given that we don't have local transmission, if you're pregnant, I'd say wait a bit until you deliver. Um, but if for some, you know, touch wood reason, we do get local transmission and you want to be vaccinated while even pregnant, at least the experience in the US is it's safe.